I'm happy to greet you. Let us start our work. Dear friends, a great of work has been performed. The preparation uh, for the launch of the space vehicle Soyuz TMA 12M. Uh, we have to uh, confirm the composition of the crews right now. And uh, the decision was made uh, to do the launch on the 26th of March. So I'm asking Mr. Krikalev to report on the preparedness uh, for the launch. Uh, dear members of the uh, State Commission, uh, for the Expedition 3940, the crews and the following compositions were being prepared. The uh, prime crew, Alexander Svartsov, is the commander of Soyuz vehicle and flight engineer of the station. Oleg Artemyev is flight engineer of Soyuz vehicle and flight engineer of uh, uh, ISS. And Steven Swanson, flight engineer two of Soyuz and the flight engineer of uh, Expedition 39 and commander of Expedition 40. The backup crew, Alexander Samokutyaev, uh, Soyuz uh, commander and flight engineer of the station, Yelena Serova, flight engineer of uh, Soyuz and flight engineer of the station, and Barry Wilmer, uh, flight engineer of Soyuz and of ISS. The program of the preparation has been uh, performed in full. All the tests and exams uh, have been successfully uh, done and performed. The Medical Commission uh, confirms that all the crew members are healthy and ready for the flight. So the State Commission uh, in GCTC reviewed the results of the exams and the tests and now it pronounces the crews, uh, the main the prime crew and the backup crew ready for the launch of the Soyuz vehicle. So currently the program uh, for the preparation of the launch has been performed in full and we confirm uh, the prime crew of Soyuz vehicle. Commander is Alexander Skvartsov, flight engineer Oleg Artemyev, and flight engineer two of Soyuz vehicle is Steven Swanson. And backup crew the commander of the vehicle is Alexander Samokutyev, flight engineer of Soyuz vehicle Yelena Serova, and flight engineer two of the vehicle is Barry Wilmer. So that ends my, my report. Uh, any questions? Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'm asking the chief designer of Energia, uh, Mr. Laporta, to report the uh, degree of the preparedness of the launch vehicle and the rocket for the launch. So we have uh, reviewed all the technical uh, features of the rocket. The rocket has been delivered to the launch site, and all the necessary activities for its preparation has been uh, have been performed. The testing, uh, integrated testing, has been performed. There are no issues that might obstruct uh, the launch of the vehicle currently. Okay, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Laporta. Now, dear colleagues, uh, I am uh, giving you the decision, the statement of the uh, chief commission. Uh, we have reviewed the report and listened to the report of Mr. Krikalev, uh, the chief of the GCTC. Uh, on the preparedness of the prime and backup crew of uh, Soyuz TMA 12M vehicle. And also we have listened and reviewed the report of uh, Chief Designer uh, Mr. Laporta. And uh, based on the results of these reports, uh, the State Commission uh, is pronouncing uh, that uh, it confirms the prime crew and the backup crew. So the prime crew commander is Ale Alexander Skvartsov and the flight engineers Oleg Artemyev and Steven Swanson. And the backup crew is the commander uh, Alexander Samokutyev, flight engineer Serova Yelena and flight engineer two, Barry Wilmer. Uh, also the commission considers that it is uh, necessary to uh, continue the preparedness, the preparation of the rocket and the Soyuz vehicle for the launch. So we confirm this statement of the State Commission. So Michael Safridini, uh, gentlemen, well you've, uh, please go ahead. Uh, between the three, you've got quite a bit of experience. 
Uh, and so now you're ready to embark on what I think is uh, be another historic journey to ISS, if not very busy. Господа, поздравляю вас, вы закончили подготовку. Если взять ваш опыт между тремя вами, опыта очень много, будет еще один исторический полет к Международной космической станции, экспедиция будет очень напряженная. You'll see uh, almost every vehicle that we have in the fleet, uh, including the ATV, which will be on its last uh, mission to the International Space Station. Вы uh, будете работать практически со всеми кораблями, которые на данный момент uh, прилетают к Международной космической станции, включая крайний корабль ATV, который будет выполнять свой последний полет. You have uh, today planned three U.S. EVAs and at least one Russian EVA. Uh, на данный момент планируется uh, три российских выхода в открытый космос, uh, вернее, три американских выхода uh, в открытый космос и один российский. Планируется провести, по крайней мере, тысячи часов uh, участия международных uh, в uh, экспериментах, научных экспериментов, также включая эксперименты с грызунами, которые будут проводиться на орбите впервые. So, uh, continuing our, uh, our journey to uh, do work on board uh, to help all of us here on, uh, on Earth, I wish you guys uh, Godspeed. Я знаю, что вы будете продолжать работу на борту для того, чтобы здесь люди на Земле пользовались результатами этой работы. Желаю вам всего самого наилучшего. Хочу предоставить слово командиру. I would like to give the word to the commander of the crew, Alexander Skvartsov. Do you read me good? Okay. Uh, we are very grateful to the management of Roscosmos and to all the personnel that participated in the preparation of our flight. And I would like to thank those people who also will prepare us for those two days before the launch. Uh, we have a lot of work to do a lot on our plate, and I think uh, that we'll have a very good cooperation with all the organizations uh, that uh, will participate in the preparation of our flight. And I would like also to thank those people in advance uh, who will also participate in the support of our flight. And uh, so uh, after the date of the launch and uh, to the date of the uh, landing, uh, you know, all these people who will work in this time frame, I would like to thank them, and I'm very grateful for their work. I give the word uh, to the flight engineer, Oleg Artemyev. Dear commission members, dear friends and colleagues, uh, thank you for uh, so this chance uh, that I've been given, and I'm happy to report that I am ready for the flight. And uh, you know, it's uh, I'm happy also to report to make this report uh, sitting here uh, on this ground, on this land where I was born and I was raised, where all the people live uh, who prepared me for the flight, and also uh, you know the backup crew. It's just a wonderful crew. We are very lucky with the backup crew. And of course, I'm even more lucky with the commander that I have. Uh, of course, it's a brain of our flight. I'm taking the brain of uh, my flight uh, into uh, the flight and also the American brain, Steve Swanson. So I think our flight will be just great. Thank you so much. Like so the microphone is given to Steve Swanson. Uh, for your support, for your hard work, and for this great opportunity. Thank you so much for your support, for your work, and for this opportunity, which is unique. Thank you so much. The microphone is given to the commander of the backup crew, Alexander Samokutev. Uh, dear Oleg and dear uh, commission members and guests, uh, thanks a lot uh, from the backup crew for the choice that you have made. Uh, it was absolutely correct choice. Uh, so the next expedition to the station is ready. We uh, will continue to be even more prepared than we are now and we'll do our best. So the microphone is given to Ilyana Sirova. Thank you uh, so much uh, for the opportunity to speak today and I would like to thank our prime crew uh, and wish you good flight and soft landing. We will be expecting you on the ground. Uh, now, Barry Wilmer, I would like to say thank you to all the specialists and personnel who were supporting us. You 
will do our work uh, better uh, and uh, it will be better with time. Thank you, dear friends. Uh, uh, as a conclusion, I congratulate you with the confirmation of the prime crew and the backup crew. Uh, the time that you will be flying uh, to the station is unique. It's between the 9th of March and April the 12th. On the 9th of March, uh, it was the 80 years since uh, Gagari, Gagarin was born. And you know, April the 12th uh, is the uh, Cosmonautics Day, International uh, Day of Cosmonautics. So I wish you all the very best and I wish you good luck. Thank you so much. Alexander. Alexander, Alec, and Stephen, I would like to wish you to do everything on time and on schedule. We are absolutely sure that you will be able to do it. Uh, you have all the necessary technical qualification. qualifications, and Alexander will control everything. So if uh, you are supposed to eat this particular amount of foodstuffs, then you will have to do it, and uh, please don't hide them anywhere. So Alexander will control everything and will be on top of things. And now, uh, you know, uh, on the human side, uh, so to say, on the human note, we will be waiting for your return. We are always r uh, nearby. We are always supporting you. We are always listening to what's happening on the station. So I wish you good luck. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. We'll continue our work. According to the program of the flights to ISS on the 26th of March, of the year 2014, on 3.16 local time, uh, the launch of uh, the Soyuz vehicle is scheduled. The crew uh, that will be on board is the crew of the Expedition 3940. Half an hour ago, uh, the State Commission confirmed the composition of the main, of the prime and the backup crew. So I would like to introduce the uh, prime crew. Skvartsov Alexander is commander of Soyuz vehicle, uh, Roscosmos, Russia. Oleg Artemyev, Oleg Artemyev uh, flight engineer of Soyuz vehicle and flight engineer of ISS, Roscosmos, Russia. And Steven Swanson, a flight engineer of uh, Soyuz vehicle and flight engineer of Expedition 39 and commander of Expedition 40 from NASA USA. Now, let me introduce the backup crew. Samokutyev Alexander, commander of Soyuz vehicle and flight engineer of ISS, Roscosmos Russia. Elena Serova, flight engineer of Soyuz vehicle and flight engineer of ISS, Roscosmos Russia. Barry Wilmer. Barry Wilmer. Flight Engineer 2 of Soyuz Vehicle and Flight Engineer of ISS, NASA, USA. After this uh, enthusiastic greetings, please let's proceed to the questions. Go ahead with your questions. Interfax Information Agency, I would like to congratulate, first of all, all the cosmonauts uh, with the assignment to the crew. Uh, I wish you good launch and good docking, and my first question is to Skvartsov Alexander. For all the crew members, it will be the very first of the vehicle uh, with this uh, four orbit uh, docking profile. During the conference in Moscow, you said that uh, you know everything should be to the schedule. So what are you expecting uh, from this flight, from this uh, profile? Thank you for the question. It's, uh, you know, you uh, started the very, uh, core of the issue. I think in this flight, actually, all three of us uh, will have the very first experience when we'll have this uh, expedited uh, docking profile. And uh, actually, it will be uh, less, uh, much more intense for us. And uh, the MCC Moscow understands that, uh, and we also understand it very fully. Uh, we have a very good cooperation with uh, our uh, support on the ground. We have discussed all the details, and uh, uh, we hope that luck also will be on our side. Alexander, there was a question connected to uh, this expedited express uh, six-hour profile. So uh, could you please uh, uh, remind us about the previous experience? about this turnover of time, so to say. 
uh, yeah, well, there were al already flights uh, on this profile and the experience uh, has been accumulated and we uh, made a decision that we won't do this uh, time turn over and i think uh, it's the correct decision and we are ready for the flight both physically and psychologically and uh, i think everything will be fine. So we won't be the very first crew. Uh, the three crews before us, uh, before us did this uh, for orbit uh, rendezvous. A couple of questions for Steve Swanson. Steve, uh, the space station's iServe camera, which is remote control for environmental studies and disaster analysis, was recently called on to try to assist in any way it could uh, with the imagery of the search area for the Malaysian Airlines jet. Uh, whether or not anything tangible comes of this exercise, how valuable is this as an example of the capabilities of the station as a global research platform and a laboratory? I think this is a very good example of what the space station can do for the world here. We have many resources on board the space station, and this is just one example of that. And we can do all sorts of kinds of research and studies of the Earth, and hopefully they do find something from this. And Steve, uh, you and your crewmates are arriving at the station for one of the busiest six-month periods in history, probably. Just a week from now, in fact, you'll be greeting the SpaceX Dragon cargo craft, and it goes on and on from there, uh, hardly a week to spare. How complex will your half year on orbit be from a vehicle traffic standpoint and a time management standpoint? Yes, we will have a lot of traffic on the cargo vehicles coming up. We will have uh, two space X Dragon vehicles. We'll have an orbital Cygnus vehicle, and we'll also have the ATV from the European Space Agency. And this will bring many different science experiments and cargo to the space station. Uh, it will keep us busy uh, unloading, doing the science, and loading it back up. But we believe we are well prepared, and uh, we won't be overtaxed. I think it's uh, we the the ground has a very good plan for this, and we'll just execute their plan. Thank you so much. Another question, please. Itartas Agency, I would like to congratulate you once again with your uh, forthcoming flight. Uh, you will see your dream come true. So you will have a lot of work, experiments and uh, maintenance, uh, but how are you going to spend your leisure on board the station? What ideas? do you have? You will take pictures of the Earth or uh, you will br you know, participate in broadcasting uh, maybe uh, some programs for the children on the ground. So what are you going to do? An interesting question. Thank you. I can talk a lot for a long time. But I think everyone uh, will be able to uh, say how uh, he is going to spend his leisure time. I'm very grateful uh, for the previous press conference in GCTC. I'm very thankful. Of course, we uh, decided with Steve, of course, we will have joint dinners. He also will be a commander, I mean Steve, and it's a very good opportunity to come together just as friends in the kitchen and uh, discuss some very current urgent uh, issues and uh, look into each other's eyes. Yeah, we have many of cameras, uh, we will take lots, lots of pictures, and uh, I hope it will be very good memory for us uh, in our later life. Um, you know, uh, as for me, about my leisure time, uh, I think actually I can speak for everyone here, even for the commander of the backup crew, Alexander. So uh, when we're passing the window, uh, we always look, uh, you know, uh, down to the ground and we'll grab a camera and we'll take pictures. Uh, you know, you can look at our beautiful Earth uh, for uh, many, many hours. But of course, each of us has a hobby and... Uh, uh, of course, uh, we will uh, do broadcasting. Uh, you know, uh, here I see the leader for us, Cosmos, is smiling. Uh, 
Absolutely, of course, uh, you know, we will do that. And each of us has a hobby. Alek and Steve uh, will say for themselves. And as for me, uh, I will also do something very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for my free time, just like Sasha was saying, that uh, the first thing is probably look out the window at our beautiful planet. Ну, как Саша уже сказал, я буду смотреть в иллюминатор и наблюдать за проплывающими мимо планеты. And also, then uh, we do plan on doing a few other fun things on board. We're going to watch the World Cup. Ну и конечно, если мы что-то заметим интересное, то мы будем за этим наблюдать. And it should be a good game if you know that uh, USA and Germany are in the same pool on the World Cup, and at that same time we will have a German astronaut on board, and uh, uh, we'll probably have a bet on who's going to clean the toilet next. Ну и конечно у нас будут астронавты из США и Германии, мы будем с ними решать, какие будут бытовые дела. Um, besides that, though, I, like Sasha, I'm going to do a, a blog, <laughs> and uh, and uh, also be spending time uh, talking to my family, writing them emails, and my friends too, and keeping in touch with home. Ну, конечно, да, как командир назначит ответственность за выполнение бытовых задач. Ну и, конечно, я буду связываться со своими родными, писать им электронные письма и вообще быть с ними в контакте. Со своей стороны. On my part, I would like to say that if I get finally, eventually, to the station, and if I have leisure at all on board the station, uh, as long as I am there, I think it will be very expensive, I mean, my leisure time there for our state. So I will dedicate my leisure time to the very useful activities, mostly, for the station, for the uh, cosmonautics, and maybe just a tiny part of my leisure time I will spend uh, to communicate with my uh, relatives and my family. I will write letters, m send them messages, and uh, keep uh, track of what I'm doing and of course absolutely I will look down at our beautiful earth um, and I don't know what else Nikolai Emelianov uh, Vesti uh, from Tumen and the festival which is called Little Birdie I greet Little Birdies yes thank you so out of three cosmonauts uh, the two of them have bird uh, last names uh, Skvarsov and Swanson Swanson is the swan uh, l uh, l in Russian. So how two different birds will be able to uh, su survive together uh, on board the station and uh, whether do you have any issues with that? <laughs> so <coughs> Skvarets is also a bird in Russian and Skvarsov, uh, the name is derived from the bird, so to say. Well, I understand that in, during the nature of this, uh, birds live together, uh, you know, very peacefully, so I don't think we will have any issues on board the station. Uh, we, the members of the same crew, uh, we fly on the same vehicle, Soyuz, uh, you know, so I think uh, we will be able to uh, live very peacefully together. <laughs> that's, you've said everything. Yes, that's it. Alexander, uh, how much time uh, did it pass since uh, since you've become training together? So the boy uh, wants to know how long uh, you need in order to become friends and become one team. Stand by one, please. There is a small technical issue. Uh, no. Well, if we talk about the time after the assignment uh, to the mission or to the crew, about a year and a half. Uh, so maybe, maybe even more. Of course, you see, uh, we uh, are professionals. The professionals usually are assigned, uh, you know, for the crew, and so they are prepared. Okay.
Natalia Bursova, Roscosmos Studio. I, on my part, uh, also congratulate you on the assignment and on the confirmation, uh, you know, to be a prime crew. Could you please uh, talk a little bit about experiments uh, that you will uh, perform on board the station? Uh, so what experiments uh, you uh, uh, like more? I understand it will be biological experiments, medical experiments, and also uh, the experiment with uh, mice. So could you please uh, dwell a little bit about on that. And uh, the second question is for uh, NASA astronauts. So Barry and Steven, you've been to space already, but it was a different program. Uh, so uh, is there a difference between the preparation when you were flying from America, you know, before to the station and the, d the preparation that you underwent in Russia of and in general uh, in order to fly to the station this time? Let's begin with the question uh, that Natalia asked. I know you, Natalia, you uh, ask very good questions as a role. So it's a very easy answer, actually, to this question. I am happy uh, that we have so many uh, research uh, experiments on the station, and the number of them uh, grows every year. So currently there are 43 experiments. I am sure that there will be more, uh, much more of the experiments in the future. Uh, but sometimes, you know, uh, uh, sometimes the methodology arrives a little bit later, uh, and I'm happy that there are so many experiments, and I hope that there will be more. Well, I, I don't think we have time to talk about all of them, but please trust me, all the experiments are they very diverse. Uh, actually, all interests uh, of uh, humankind in space uh, are represented in these experiments. Uh, it's from the body of the human organism in space and microgravity, and uh, you know uh, all the branches of science actually are represented. I think maybe we should make a list of all the research experiments. Uh, you know, and put it somewhere on the wall. Now about mice. Yes, about rodents. Uh, we've been instructed on how to work with rodents. I think American uh, crew members know more about it, but on STS-131 uh, and Shuttle-131, I actually uh, saw how mice behave. Uh, so it's very interesting picture. But Steve will uh, tell you about it in detail. Uh, we do have many experience on board uh, the space station, uh, and they range from basic science to working on how the human body works, to working on how other creatures like the rodents uh, adapt to space. Uh, yeah, uh, also, they have experiments, of course, we work on ourselves. Uh, they, we measure many things about us, about our eyesight, about our body itself, and, uh, and then the other comparison, of course, is the rodents. And the one thing I like the difference in there is that uh, for the rodents, we have to dissect them, and for the humans, we don't. И у нас много экспериментов с нами самими. Мы много измеряем различных параметров нашего тела, как наше тело ведет себя в невесомости. И то же самое мы очень много делаем различных действий с грызунами. Но в чем разница в том, что грызунов надо э, очищать, дезинфицировать, а нас не нужно. But that's just one of the many experiments we have on board. We have many uh, great experiments. As for the difference in training between Russia and America, uh, for me, it is a little different because uh, I do not need all the skills that uh, Sasha and Oleg have for the maintaining the Russian segment. Uh, that's mostly their job. I'm just there to help them if they ever need it, or and they just help me if I need to do something there. However, though, I am responsible for the U.S. segment, so I have much uh, a need for much more detailed uh, knowledge on those systems. And I also uh, work on more than experiments on the American side, so I have to do a lot of training for those experiments while I don't do the training on the Russian side for their experiments. I wanted to add 
that uh, we have a very similar preparation for the experiments on the Russian uh, program, and we actually uh, can help each other and uh, change out each other, so to say. Uh, there are also multi-segment experiments on board the station now. For example, there are two experiments uh, that are American experiments, but we will participate in them. And I would like to have more of uh, uh, experiments of this type on the station. Now, as to what experiments we like more, uh, for me, all experiments are equally interesting. You know, uh, I'm just eager to put my hands on them, to get to the station and start working. But the most interesting experiment Experiments, I think, are the experiments where you have to apply some efforts. Uh, of course, there are some experiments that go on on their own, you know, and uh, are just controlled by us. But there are some experiments where you have to apply even physical force, for example, during the EVA, during, during spacewalks. So these experiments are more interesting for me, I think. And one of the experiments is called a test. And it is uh, supervised uh, by my supervisor in Energia and my research uh, supervisor, and it, this experiment uh, result, uh, you know, will probably help us to understand how life uh, actually uh, forms and it dissipated in space. Anna Samuelenka, uh, it's a lyrical question that is addressed to all uh, crew members of the prime crew and the back up crew. In Russia, cosmonauts are being prepared for a long time, and on return, uh, they receive the uh, <clears throat> title, Hero of Russia. So what um, actually uh, was the motivation for you to choose this heroic profession of a cosmonaut? Thank you in advance. Well, it's family tradition for me, actually. Uh, uh, when a father is proud of the son, it's very important, and it's very important for me. My very first flight, I dedicated to my parents, and my second flight probably will be for myself and for my family. Uh, Sasha, just a background. Your father, my father was in uh, the cosmonaut corps. Uh, he was a member of the cosmonaut corps. It was the third assignment. But uh, he did not have uh, a chance to fly. Uh, he was just a, a military pilot. But for some time, he was in the cosmonaut corps. So I followed in his footsteps. Uh, I became uh, the uh, uh, military pilot, but I even, mm, you know, came further, I became a cosmonaut. Uh, it was his dream and my dream. It's a very interesting question. I am actually here by pure, pure by chance, by accident. Uh, you know, probably uh, I just didn't have any other option. I was looking for an interesting job, you know, and I wanted to see something that I haven't seen before. And eventually, I, uh, you know, ended up in this uh, chair today. As for the heroism, you know, when you are doing this, uh, uh, you just, you don't think about it. Okay, so if I am giving this title, the hero of Russia, it's fine. But, you know, it was not the reason why I chose this profession. Uh, it's a, I don't think it's heroic. It's very, very interesting. Steven, пока. Steven also uh, wants to say something. Could you please pass the mic to him? For me, it was a time in my life after I finished my master's degree when I was trying to figure out really what I wanted to do uh, for a job. Uh, and uh, I came across this idea of being an astronaut. Uh, I liked the idea of a, a job that uh, made you use your brain, had some physical activity in it, and had adventure. Ну и, конечно, потом мне пришла идея стать не только сотрудником НАСА, но и астронавтом. И мне нравится работа с телом, когда работает мозг, когда ты применяешь какие-то физические усилия. И, конечно же, это некоторое приключение. И после многих лет подготовки мне повезло, и вот я здесь. 
I would like to correct Oleg a little bit, uh, not even correct him, but, you know, we're all professionals here, and there is a notion, a very old, good notion, that if uh, you want to, uh, m you know, make a flight a feat, uh, some kind of uh, outstanding uh, event, actually you are not ready for the flight. Uh, so if you are professional, it's an ordinary job for you. So I would like again to thank all the people who prepared us for the flight. We are just the tip of the iceberg, the, uh, the top of the pyramid. Uh, trust me. Uh, so if we have something of nominal on board, of course uh, we uh, will try to cope with it. Uh, uh, but we have been prepared for it. And uh, I prepared for 13 years for my first flight. Oleg, how long did it take you? A little bit less. Yes, but you know, the time that was spent on the preparation in order to uh, sit in this chair, as he said, actually enormous. So professionally, we are ready, and psychologically, we are ready, and Baikonur launch site is a place uh, for fine-tuning before our flight. Good afternoon uh, to Argumente and Facte uh, newspaper. Uh, I congratulate you sincerely. Uh, that you are to make this flight after this date, uh, you know, the anniversary that we celebrated Gagarin's 80 years. And actually, I was very lucky to uh, go to the village Glushina, where uh, during the occupation of the by the German uh, army, uh, you know, in the Second World War, uh, his family lived for a year. And uh, in 20 years passed after that time, and our country uh, that uh, won the war, uh, you know, and uh, so there was a guy who was born in this village, and uh, this, uh, this little uh, guy from this village became the first cosmonaut and flew to space for the first time. So I, uh, the question is, uh, what is the importance of Gagarin's inheritance? Uh, what uh, it played uh, in your destiny? Well, I've already told you about my parents. I was born in Zvezny, and here uh, my brother, Jura, uh, sitting among uh, you, he was born on the 6th of April, 1968. And, uh, you know, in 68, Gagarin uh, uh, died, crashed. It was a big tragedy. So um, we didn't even think uh, what name uh, we should give to uh, our newborn brother. So he was uh, named Yuri after Yuri Gagarin. So Yuri Gagarin uh, will forever be for me the very first man who went to space. Maybe it is banal, but he was the first, the pioneer, the trailblazer for us. Gagarin is our pride, not only the pride of our country, but the pride of all our planet. He was the pioneer in space for the whole mankind. And, uh, there, you know, he is unique. There is nobody else like him. And we are uh, walking in his footsteps. And the first uh, memorial, probably, that will be installed on uh, other planets will be dedicated to him, I think. I'd like to add what Alex said, that uh, Yuri is a, a symbol for the whole world. Uh, we even in the U.S. have a Yuri's Night Out, where they celebrate his first mission. Ну, я хочу только добавить, что Юрий Гагарин это символ для всего мира, и у нас в США мы тоже это отмечаем и празднуем первый полет. And I'm proud just to be part of the history here. И, конечно, я рад быть частью истории здесь. I also want to tell you a secret. Uh, I don't know whether it was uh, known or not, but in uh, NASA, in the uh, astronaut uh, office, uh, they have a bust of Gagarin. And actually, the 12th of April is the worldwide cosmonautics day. Um, so not only we celebrate it in Russia, but in other countries as well, they celebrate this day. Publisher. My question is for Steve. 
I actually have two questions for you. Um, what does it feel like when you're leaving Earth? What type of emotions do you experience? Do you, do you feel any fear, or is it just exhilaration? That's my first question. Yeah, so it's, to me, it's kind of like uh, when you go on an amusement park ride. <laughs> and it's just uh, the, it's very, very fun for me. I'm, I'm very happy, and I enjoy the whole thing. Mm. My second question is, uh, do you presently speak Russian, and are you planning on learning it in your spare time in space, if you don't already, to be able to, to speak with your fellow cosmonauts? I don't uh, speak Russian very well at all. Uh, and luckily, they speak English, and so we get along quite well. Uh, we communicate fine, and uh, probably we won't uh, do too much learning uh, uh, the other languages in space. We'll be working more than that, but we will definitely uh, spend a lot of time together. We will eat together, and uh, we'll enjoy each other's company. And my final question is for the only female on the panel, uh, Yelena. Do you feel like a trailblazer, and how does it feel to be on this panel, the only, the only female represented? No, I don't feel uh, a kind of separate entity from the crew, because the crew is one team, and it always has to be. It's one organism, one body, so to say. And if we feel separate, we won't be able to perform the tasks uh, that we are supposed to do. And every one of us is ready to work together in a team, helping to each other. And uh, that's how we're going to perform our main objective. I hope that my Russian uh, will be sufficient. Okay. So, so your mission in general, so what kind of use will it bring to the mankind in general, your expedition and expeditions in general, and also uh, what use uh, it will bring to science? You know, we hear that uh, one expedition, another expedition flies to the ISS, but how important it is for the science and for the humankind? Thank you. Actually, uh, uh, you know, people are uh, sometimes very hasty to see the result, an immediate result. But there are fundamental sciences. And in order to uh, get some results in the sciences, you need some time. Uh, you know, sometimes I ask this question uh, to myself, you know, uh, how important it is. Because sometimes you continue the experiments that other people started. You know. Uh, once I saw a movie uh, that probably will ans as answer your question. It summarizes the results. So uh, the first, uh, you know, that was shown is this film, A Bag, a Velcro, you know, that was invented in space, and then uh, now it is uh, so commonly used on the ground. So, there, you know, there are things uh, that we use in our daily life, and sometimes we don't even realize uh, where these daily things come from. And uh, they first actually were uh, used on board the station. So the science uh, that works for space actually is very useful. But, you know, uh, everything is so fast in our daily life, and we get used uh, to the results, uh, to some very useful things, and we just don't uh, understand and realize, you know, that it all came from Spence. I think maybe we should make another film and that will show how our experience of this annual flight, uh, experiments on the station, uh, how these results are used on the ground later. Of course, uh, it's interesting for us to see the uh, fish the school of fish and to uh, tell, you know, to the uh, sailors uh, in the sea on the ground where this uh, school of fish is, and they will immediately catch this. This is an immediate result, but you see some results are not immediate. Uh, so, you know, let's probably wait and see what other results there will be from the station. But of course, there are very tangible results, believe me. Thank you so much. And uh, there is a, a children's question here. Uh, the girl from Tumen. So in your backup crew, you have a lady, Elena Serova. Maybe as gentlemen, you should give her the right to fly first, not in the backup crew. Elena, uh, will you have another chance to fly? 
First of all, I think it's a question to the crew commander, maybe Oleg Artemyev, as a gentleman. Maybe he should, uh, you know. Well, I, I think uh, I will give uh, our men I won't give our men a chance to speak. Um, you know, they don't have to behave as gentlemen here. Of course, you know, there is a schedule uh, that we need uh, to uh, stick to. There is a certain order. And actually, you know, uh, we don't separate into men and women, males and females. We all are crew members. We all are specialists. Uh, now, regarding the second part of your question, yes, I am going to fly. Uh, our flight is, my flight is scheduled for September, and I hope very much to be able to make this flight. Thank you for the question. We hope that on the 11th of September we'll land, and uh, when we have uh, the final breakfast in GCTC, the we uh, we will come there, even though we won't uh, be, you know, adapted for the uh, gravity fully, but we will uh, go, we will come to this breakfast and we will uh, say farewell to uh, Lena and Sasha. Uh, you know, so the backup crew also will become a primary crew, and the backup crew, that is backup crew now, will have their own backup crew later. So uh, this is a sequence, a succession. That's how it should be, and uh, that, uh, you know, all crew members go through that. So everything should be nominally, and one by one, uh, the crews should go to space as they should. Yes, that's correct.